What's up guys, it's Alvi T from Combat Culture and today I want to cover one of my favorite subjects and that is the golden era of Muay Thai. So what is the golden era of Muay Thai? So the golden era of Muay Thai is commonly recognized as a span between the 1980s and the 1990s. During this period, Muay Thai experienced an unprecedented amount of growth in popularity, both domestically and internationally. And this surge in interest was fueled by a combination of economic prosperity, cultural significance, and the emergence of legendary fighters. So let's dive a little deeper into some of the different factors that contributed to the rise of Muay Thai during this time. So Thailand experienced an economic boom between 1985 and 1988, and that played a pivotal role in the rise of Muay Thai. Bangkok, its capital city, emerged as a powerhouse in Southeast Asia, attracting people from all over Thailand seeking economic opportunities. And this influx of talent into Bangkok bolstered the two most prestigious stadiums in Thailand, and that's Lumpini Stadium and Rajadamurn Stadium. And that resulted in record attendance numbers and heightened competition. However, alongside the economic prosperity came the shadow of gambling, which both fueled and plagued the sport. And despite gambling being officially illegal in Thailand, with a few exceptions, Muay Thai matches became a focal point for betting activities. This brought in a lot of revenue, but led to a lot of questionable matches and suspicious outcomes, which hurt the sport's integrity over time and it's something that we'll circle back to later on in the video. But with the surge of popularity and revenue, gyms and fighters were making more money than they've ever had. So this created a race for gyms to recruit prospects from all over Thailand. And that in turn created opportunities for aspiring fighters who are looking to fight their way out of poverty. And for gyms, the bigger stable of fighters you had, the more likely you'd produce champions. The more champions you had, the more prestige the gym receives, and the more money you'd make. The money would oftentimes be invested in building bigger gyms and investing in a bigger roster of fighters. And because of the high profile matchmaking, the top fighters would be making more money than any fighter I've ever made before in the past. And this leads into another factor, and that's the depth of the pool of high caliber talent. This is arguably the era where some of the greatest fighters of all time competed. I mean, just for a second, imagine an NBA league filled with all Michael Jordans, Shaquille O'Neal's, and LeBron James. That's essentially what the golden age era was when you look at the competitive scene. And what that meant was that only the best of the best would make it into the bigger stadium shows. It's why several of the golden age legends that we've interviewed in the past have always said that it was such a big achievement for them to fight at one of the bigger stadiums because you really have to be that good. And oftentimes when people talk about the modern era compared to the golden era, people always say that, oh, the golden era had, you know, so much more talent and people are so much better. And while I think there is some truth to that, I think really one of the main reasons is because a lot of the top level talents back in the day would compete against one another very often. It wasn't a surprise if you fought against the same guy two, three, four, five times in your career. And because it was such a stacked uh, pool of talent, in order to stay at that level, you constantly had to get better because if you didn't, you simply just wouldn't be in that top echelon of the best fighters. And if you were to get better, naturally your opponents would get better. So this created the perfect storm of just an insane amount of drive and competition among the best talents of the day. And another contributing factor to the boom of Muay Thai during this time was because fights more than ever were readily available on television, which absolutely helped increase the visibility of the sport. And because Muay Thai was already heavily intertwined with Thai culture, this created the perfect formula for Muay Thai fighters to become larger than life. Which leads us to some of the greatest fighters of the era, arguably of all time. Like Samat, who's renowned for his exceptional skill, considered one of the greatest Muay Thai fighters of all time, known for his fluid technique and high fight IQ. Diesel Noy, dominant Muay Cao fighter, known for his imposing size, relentless knee strikes. He was undefeated for four years during his prime. Sagat, a powerful Muay Mat known for his devastating kicks and aggressive style and one of the inspirations for the character Sagat in the Street Fighter series. Karahat, a skilled Muay Femur, a favorite among many of the Golden Age legend, highly regarded as one of the most technically skilled fighters of his era. And there's Chamok Pet, another strong clinch fighter known for his relentless pressure. He had a very strong teep that kept his opponents away and then his straight knees would make them pay when they were up close. You got Boon Lai, a very strategic fighter known for his tactical approach and ability to adapt to different opponents. He excelled in both offensive and defensive tactics. Olay, 
He was very elusive, just always seemed as if he was one step ahead of his opponents. He had a super high tempo fighting style which would often overwhelm opponents. Lang Sun, a high pressure aggressive fighter, very dangerous in the clinch, smothered his opponents, firing knee after knee. Wang Chunhui, he was a favorite Muay Mod fighter amongst many, had some of the best boxing of the day. Really high pressure book style that helped him secure victories over some of the best female fighters of all time. Samson, another high pressure Muay Mod fighter. Very high level boxing for the time when boxing wasn't really prioritized. He was undefeated as a professional boxer. Lam Nam Moon, a strong bulk Muay Cao fighter, walked you down and just sapped energy out of you with his knees. And then there's my coaches, Khan Sok. He was a dynamic and explosive fighter known for his speed and versatility, used his defense offensively, and in my coaches back home on the west coast, John Tanan, Nun Siam, and Bunker, and all from the Fairtex family. And those are just some of the notable names from the golden era. We can make a separate video of just golden era legends alone. So we covered most of the positives. So what happened? Well, Muay Thai's popularity started declining in the mid-90s. Fans started losing interest because of questionable matchups and suspicious outcomes. A lot of that because of the gambling which we talked about earlier. And because of that association, it really hurt the credibility of the sport on a mainstream level. And also this was around the time when Thailand was going through one of its worst financial crises in recent history. And this had a ripple effect on the Muay Thai ecosystem. Less people were going to watch the fights, which means less money's at the gate. Less money at the gate, which means gyms were making less money. Gyms making less money, which means fighters were making less money, which meant aspiring fighters weren't getting as many opportunities. You get the picture. Now, although Thailand's economy has recovered since then, it still hasn't recovered to pre-crisis levels. And the same really can be said about Muay Thai. However, with Muay Thai now being more accessible than ever, its popularity continues to grow and more than likely will grow at a higher scale than it was before, especially on an international level. Stars like San Chai and Bua Kao emerged as some of the biggest stars to come out of the post-Golden Age era. And the future of Muay Thai, the sport, continues to look bright, you know, with the new brand of entertainment Muay Thai from companies such as One Championship and RWS over at Rajat, which has created the platform to give rise to new stars such as Tao Wan Chai, Rod Tang and Stan Fairtex. So I hope you found this video interesting and encourages you to look up some of the old fighters and fights from back in the day. And maybe even if you have the opportunity to train with some of these old fighters. I honestly think one of the most underappreciated things about Muay Thai is really how accessible a lot of these legends are. And I personally have the privilege of training with some of these legends and I really can't think of any other sport or hobby where I can say that I've trained with some of the best. In conclusion, the golden age of Muay Thai represents a time of unparalleled growth, innovation, and excellence in the sport's history. And that's a big reason why it's looked back on so fondly. While challenges may have brought it to an end, the stars that were created in that era continue to serve as inspiration for fighters and fans all across the world. We'll be back with more videos soon. Until then, keep training, stay safe, and be healthy. We'll see you guys in the next one.